Hi, I'm Jeff Baxter, and I'm going to show you how to use SDK to quickly design a mission to the moon. This has been a lot of hot topic in the news lately uh, with the Apollo 11 anniversary, as well as other industry events and news about Artemis and the overall desire to return back to the moon and go on beyond to Mars. So I've created a blog that shows this on our website, and there's also an FAQ link to this that has all of the steps that I'm going to be going through. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and walk you through that directly inside of SDK here. So in this example, I'm starting from a brand new, just a blank scenario. I've done nothing here. And I'm going to start by inserting our satellite object, which is going to design and define our mission to the moon. So I'm going to start with a blank define properties satellite. I will be using Astrogator for this example. So here I'll change the propagator type to Astrogator. And one of the nice and not so well known features of Astrogator is there are many segments that you can choose to fully customize any type of trajectory, whether you're going to the moon or Mars, other planets, or even doing stuff here and low Earth orbit or geostationary orbit around the Earth. So what I'm going to show you is there's some temp template examples that show you how to do some of these things to get started. So there's an example astrogator sequence here uh, that goes from Earth to the moon, and it has a lot of those segments already predefined for us. So I'm going to delete the initial segments that were part of the initial default satellite and show you real quick what this consists of. So there's a targeting sequence that has a several different profiles that will ultimately allow us to launch, coast, perform a TLI, and then propagate to the moon. And then once we're there, we will do a lunar, lunar orbit insertion and then propagate around the moon. So let's go ahead and run this and show you how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and run this mission control sequence here by hitting the green arrow. What you can see is there are targeting windows that are giving me an update on how well my uh, solution is converging from my initial conditions to the final desired state. Uh, the desired state is uh, what was part of the overall sequence listed here in terms of the launch date, the time of flight, and so forth. So here I can see that my solution has completely converged and now I can visualize and view the trajectory. You'll notice there's lots of individual lines here. These lines are representing all the guesses as it's approaching my solution. So I can go ahead and hit the eraser button here and that will just converge on my final solution. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this so that I'm viewing it at this time frame because right now I'm at the, the current scenario time. So I'm going to go ahead and set my animation time to this time at the beginning of my sequence, which is at the launch. So when I do that, let me go ahead and close this window and maximize my 3D window so I can see a little bit better here. Here you can see we're launching out of Florida. And once we go begin animating here, uh, we'll see the launch. And we're propagating here. And then when we get to this red segment on the other side of the Earth, we'll do our lunar orbit insert or uh, translunar in injection burn. So now we've got our satellite and it's going off on its trajectory. And you'll see eventually it's going to uh, orbit, the, er, orbit the moon here. So one quick note, you might notice as you zoom out, your, your dot and your labels just dis disappear. So you can modify that quickly in the properties and set all of those thresholds for when that's, when that's happening. Or you can just turn them off altogether. So here we've got our satellite. It's approaching the moon. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and speed up our animation here. And you can see the satellite approaching the moon. Eventually, it will do its uh, orbit insertion burn, and it will be uh, rot or orbiting around the moon. So now let's go ahead and let's create some different views of this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a duplicate 3D graphics window. And we'll center this new view on the moon instead. And we can see that we are now successfully captured in this orbit around the moon. So just like that, 
we were able to design this mission to meet certain mission requirements. You can then change any of these initial conditions that you would like or the desired conditions. So in this case, let's say we wanted to move our orbit altitude to 500 kilometers, for example. Um, we can go ahead and uh, run that MCS and then that will recalculate the entire trajectory and it will recalculate the orbit around the moon and it will show us our new solution. Once we have the solution, we can then not just visualize the results as we see here. We can also extract all of the data that gets computed, such as how much delta V was required to actually uh, do this mission. So here what I can do is I can run a summary report on our maneuver segment. And what you see here is a lot of different information about the, about the maneuver, about the trajectory. Um, but what you can see is the, the, the delta V required to, uh, to perform these maneuvers to get you on your mission out to the moon. So it gives you the delta V vectors right there. So that's quickly how you would do a mission. So now that we've got our trajectory, we can now use the rest of the STK environment to do a variety of other types of analysis. So let's say, for example, we wanted to look at the communications link to a deep space network facility. There is a database of facilities built into SDK. You can also enter the locations of your ground stations uh, manually by hand by entering the, the latitude and longitude values. In this case, I will go ahead and use one of the pre-existing ground station networks for NASA DSN. Here I can see all of the locations. I will choose one of these locations here at Goldstone. And now I can insert that ground station into my scenario. I now see that ground station listed here, which I can see is over in uh, California. And now if I wanted to compute my visibility, my line of sight uh, to the satellite, perhaps I want to do some communications as it's doing some critical maneuvers like the deep space or the, the lunar orbit insertion maneuver here, for example. So I can do quick calculations. In this case, we're using the access tool to compute when we have line of sight. In this case, we can see we have line of sight. We can generate reports that will give us all the durations when we have line of sight, as well as the total duration. We can do graphs. Uh, we can do azimuth elevation range reports that tell us the geometry if we wanted to know exactly where to point our dish at any given instant in time. And we can now see our results, and we can see, yes, we do have line of sight during this lunar orbit insertion. And you can see as the Earth rotates, you can see you're uh, picking up and dropping out the line of sight as you get access to the ground station. So here you can see the Earth rotating. We now get access just in time for our lunar orbit insertion burn. So that's a quick summary of how you would create and uh, model lunar missions inside of SDK. We used Astrogator, we used one of the example sequences that was built in, and we ran the mission control sequence, we changed some of the inputs, looked at some of the results in the Delta V to get there, and then computed access to determine when we have communication times to our satellite. That's all, thanks for watching.